I'm just on my way home from work and stopped to get a caramel frappuccino from Starbucks. Maybe a contender for the mocha. <laughs> I've actually got another workshop tonight from 5 p.m. till 4 a.m. tomorrow. <laughs> it's because the workshop's in America, so ugh, I won't stay for the whole thing. Like probably when they stop for lunch, I'll go to bed. So I had another couple of questions on Instagram, mainly about like meal plans and how I've managed to relax with it and like incorporate new things in my meal plan, which is a really good question. It's something I struggled quite a lot with. So I've written the questions down there on my Instagram and I'm recording on my phone. So I've had to write them out. So the first question was, how do you cope with going out of the meal plan? For example, I find myself comfortable in my own meal plan with safe foods and I'm scared of going out to eat. When I do, I always count the calories to see if it matches my meal plan. And if it doesn't, then I compensate somehow. So been there. <laughs> I actually love going out for like breakfasts and dinners. So that was like a really big goal for me and something I wanted to really incorporate. But I was always so scared to do it because I didn't know how many calories were in restaurant food. Or you could look up the calories, which is almost just as bad. I'd always find myself restricting in the run up to a meal out or afterwards to try and compensate for extra calories. It just can be quite an anxiety provoking experience. So I always knew I wanted to be able to go out for food. So I spoke to my dietitian about it at first and asked her to help me like work it into my plan, which I think was a kind of stepping stone for me. Like if she's been involved, it's almost like giving me permission to go out and eat these foods. If I can't trust my own judgment, then I know I've had help from someone else to like tell me what's okay and give me some kind of guidance. So I would actually tell her the restaurant I was going to and then she'd give me some suggestions and then I would just follow that. So it was almost like following my meal plan, but it was just doing it at a restaurant. But after a while, I actually kind of found it a bit restrictive in a way because she'd give me this meal. Say she'd say like, go and have a burger and chips or French fries if you're in America. If I got to the restaurant and the burgers all had cheese in them, then I'd be like, oh my God, cheese isn't in the plan. And then what do you do? Like scrape the cheese out or ask for a certain meal, but with bits on the side, like that kind of felt like my old behaviors. So after a few times of doing it, I kind of just thought like, no, I want to do this in a more normal fashion. I kind of felt a bit ready for it. So I was like, Right, I'm just gonna have to do it then. And this sounds like such terrible advice, but honestly, that is what I had to do. I had to just do it. I had to not restrict beforehand, not restrict after, not try and choose the lowest calorie option on the menu, not order something, but with this bit on the side and cut that bit out, not trawl through menus online before I got there to see how many calories were in things and not substituting wine for food. If we're gonna have a drink, like just all the things that I would be driven to do around going out for food. I was like, right, you're not doing them. And I've made that sound so easy. It wasn't at all. I had like big panics after dinners. I actually had big panics during dinners sometimes as well. If my food came and it was like oilier than I was expecting or something, I would literally be sat there trying to talk to my friends, but in my head, I'd be like, oh my God, oh my God. But really I did just have to do it and then not compensate afterwards and then do it again and not compensate afterwards and do it again, like eat, repeat, eat, repeat. And then gradually over time, I didn't get as scared. I didn't have the anxiety in the same way because I was learning like nothing bad's happening. Like I've not ballooned or lost control or got fat, but you really have to just do it to learn that those things don't happen. That really sounds like terrible advice, doesn't it? Just do it. <laughs> Maybe some other better advice than just do it is I would try to think before I got to a restaurant what it was that I fancied. So if we we're going for breakfast, I love avocados and scrambled eggs on toast. So I'd think to myself before, like, okay, that's what I feel like. I will have that. And I would basically like commit to it before we... Look at this guy. <laughs> commit to it before we got to the restaurant and I'd have it in my head and I would literally go through in my head like, you're having avocado and scrambled egg. You're having avocado and scrambled egg. Do not order a salad. Do not order a fruit. It doesn't matter what someone else is doing. Like I'd literally psych myself up to get there. Or also quite helpful was telling Brendan before we got to a restaurant what I was planning to have. So Brendan, I'm gonna have scrambled and, avo scrambled and avocado. I'm gonna have toast, scrambled egg and avocado. Because sometimes it's easier to think about food when food's not directly there. Like as soon as you're in the vicinity of food, it triggers your like fear response and your shit I need to order the lowest calorie thing but if you thought about it when you're in like a calmer state of mind and you're a bit more you in your head 
then I find it helpful to like think through what I want then and commit to it. And then it still is hard to be honest to follow through when you get to the restaurant, but like you've already promised yourself, like this is what I'm gonna have. You've psyched yourself up. And then when you get there, you just order it or even get someone else to order it. I've sometimes said to Brendan, like, I want a burger, you choose it. There we go. <laughs> I think one of the big turning points for me with going out was changing my priorities when I went for a meal. So before my number one priority was always choose the lowest calorie option. And I basically had to break that. Like I had to go out and accept that I'm not always gonna have the lowest calorie thing on the menu. It might be more than my meal plan. Someone else might be having a salad and I'm gonna order pasta. So I would actually force myself to actively not choose the lowest calorie thing on the menu because I was like proving to myself, nothing bad's gonna happen if you do it. And then I did it and did it and did it. And then over time I just got more relaxed and like I can now go for food and not be drawn to the lowest calorie thing and not feel guilty about it which is so nice because my priority now isn't you have to choose the lowest calorie option it's you can choose whatever you want and just enjoy being with your friends which I guess a meal out should be like your priority should be enjoying social company and enjoying the food and not stressing out for three days three weeks in advance of a meal out <laughs> But yeah, basically for me, I had to break my fear of having the highest calorie option on the menu, or not even that, just not having the lowest calorie option on the menu, going over my meal plan, having more than somebody else at the table. Like the only way you'll get unscared of those things is to do them. Just do it, do it and realize that nothing bad happens. Okay, let me do another question. Also my written out Instagram. <laughs> You've mentioned you're on a meal plan and work with a dietitian. How does she work things like a piece of cake or unknown measurement of peanut butter syrup into a structured plan? Would also love your thoughts on if, how you dealt with worry you'd become bulimic or binge as you worked on increasing food and guilt of eating more. Okay, let me start on the first part of the question first. So in the past, I've actually been in like calorie counting, measuring things out, hell, and I absolutely hated it. So when I started seeing my dietitian, I was like, please, like you just look after that for me and calculate whatever you need to, but like, I don't want to know. And so she gave me more like guidance and general portion sizes and a balanced diet, I guess, but it wasn't like completely measured out to the T. Brendan, my fiance was incredibly helpful. And he basically took over like portioning of food, choosing what we were having for dinner, which was so difficult to let go of control and like get out of the kitchen. And I don't, you don't know what someone else is doing with your food. But for me, it really did help because it was like one less opportunity for anorexia to sneak in basically. And one less decision that I had to make where I would then get this like thoughts in my head, like, oh, why don't you just do this? Why don't you leave this bit out? And also it helped me just learn what portion sizes were because you kind of forget like when you're restricting your food. And I know of course not everyone's gonna be that lucky that they've got someone that can like portion their food for them, but maybe eating out's a good thing as well because then it's somebody else portioning food for you and you're not able to do your measurements and your calculations. And that's kind of what you need. You just need something to break it and to stop you doing it. And so my dietitian knew that if I was getting meals served by Brendan or I was going out to a restaurant, I was getting like normal sized portions of normal food which is all well and good. But then again, I got to a point where I was like, okay, I want to take a bit more on myself now. And so then I started like portioning certain things myself and still not measuring them. So things like my porridge, which I put like toppings on of like peanut butter and maple syrup. And this is where it gets scary because if you're doing it yourself, you can't be restricting, you can't be cutting back. So again, a bit like with eating out, you have to accept like, I may not always have the lowest option. Sometimes I might have slightly more than my meal plan, but like, that's kind of normal life as well. Like humans don't exist on the exact same number of calories every single day or the exact number of grams of cornflakes for their breakfast. So like these, for example, I've never looked up the calorie content of these. Like mocha is my favorite. Maybe that's the highest calorie one. I actually honestly don't know, but I've had to accept like, if it is, then it just is, that's okay. Like, again, it's a bit of that just do it thing. Like you have to have something higher calorie every now and then or a bit over an exact measurement to realize like, Oh well, <laughs> nothing happened. And same with my porridge for breakfast. I follow kind of like recipes and some of them I'm sure are higher calories than others. I can tell because they've got extra ingredients in that the other ones didn't have, but I don't count it. So I don't know exactly. And again, I've just had to accept like some days for breakfast, my porridge might be slightly more calories than the day before. 
And I guess that's scary at first. And I was always tempted to choose the one that I could tell would be the lowest calorie option. But like, I don't want to live my life like that. So I guess it's a bit of like, live the life you want to live. Like if you don't want to always have to measure and count and do the tiniest scrapings of whatever, like you have to not do it and not compensate and then repeat it, eat, repeat, eat, repeat, and then realize like, nothing bad's happened. I haven't ballooned. I haven't gained a shit ton of weight. I've not lost control. I've not ate and ate forever. Like I actually didn't need to be measuring and counting in the first place. But it definitely is gradual. Like I didn't let go of all measurements and calculations straight away. Like I said, I had like external help at first and then I gradually like brought things in myself, which is difficult, but like accepting that, okay, some days I will have more calories than others. I hope that actually answers the question. <laughs> I'm getting so hot. I'm gonna have to put the air con on. <laughs> like I'm in a music video again. <laughs> I don't wanna leave the blowers on because I think it'll be too noisy on the recording. Okay, I'm gonna try and answer the question really quickly because it's so hot. But I do think it is a really important question. So how have I avoided or do I worry about binging as I start introducing new foods and eating more? And yes, in all honesty, I have worried about it because it does happen. People recover from anorexia and then develop bulimia or other types of eating disorders. And like, for me, I wanna recover into unrestricted eating basically, and like not have eating and food and weight worries. So like, I have been very conscious that I didn't want that to happen. And I have had advice from my psychologist and my dietitian here, but like, I'm not a doctor and this is just something that's worked for me. So I'll share it, but like, yeah, I'm not a professional. <laughs> okay, so I always eat at least three meals and three snacks a day. I never go more than probably about three hours without food, to be honest. And that's even if I'm not hungry as well, I will still make myself eat my meals or snacks. I've tried so hard to not cut certain food groups out because I think when you're restricting something, then your body's gonna like crave it and want it. And when you do start eating it, then it's not gonna know what it tastes like or it's not had it for a while. It's in deficit from this food. So then it's just gonna be like, I wanna eat all of that food now. And the times I've really worried about it are as I'm introducing new foods back into my diet. So things that I've restricted and denied myself for so long, because then like, not surprisingly, my body wants all of them because it can't remember what they taste like. Imagine anybody in the world going without bread or cake or something for years and years. Like they now have a massive cake deficit or bread deficit. Like, of course they're just gonna wanna eat cake and bread all the time. And I've also been conscious that I don't want to just recover on safe foods. I don't want to weight gain and move through recovery and then at the end still only be able to eat the, the foods that I feel safe with. So I actually worked with my dietitian most weeks to introduce a new food and I didn't try and introduce them all at once because the other thing, once I start eating a new food again, I literally want that food all the time. So like frappuccinos was one, I went absolutely crazy for them. Oats have been another one, pancakes. Pasta pesto was quite strange. It's actually happened to pretty much every food when I reintroduce it back in. So I do do them gradually. And I also allow myself the food. Like if I'm wanting it, I allow it. So like the week I introduced pancakes, I think I went a few days where I had it for breakfast and every single snack that day because I was just like, where's this been all my life? <laughs> and yeah, I had this big pancake deficit, which I needed to fill. So. I tried to just like understand why my body was wanting these foods so badly and then allow that and like work it into my day and allow myself to eat it. Need another blast. <laughs> okay, let's give it a go. <laughs> I would also buy things in like individual portion sizes. So like when I'm eating ice cream, I buy like the individual tubs rather than having a whole tub of ice cream that I can eat from. And I spoke about it in the extreme hunger video, but I also always try to plate my food so that I'm deciding to eat basically. Like I know why I need these foods and why I'm hungry and craving and why I wanna eat the whole kitchen. But so I like allow that, like I'm deciding to eat and I sit down and plate my food and eat it. And those things are important for me because like, okay, I need to make a distinction here between like, I think there's binging in recovery where you crave all of this food and physically and mentally you just want to eat and never ever stop and 
I honestly think anybody in the world put through mental and physical starvation would have that sensation. Even like animals, in animal studies, when they get starved, as soon as they're allowed to eat again, they binge on the food because it's their body just trying to fix itself. So I think it's totally normal that we will eat a lot of food in recovery and easily sit down and just demolish your kitchen. But the kind of distinction that I would make is like, if you're doing that as an understandable part of recovery and like you know why your body and mind is that hungry, then that's fine, that's a normal part of the recovery process. But I think if you do it and then have this like guilt and regret and like shame that you've done it and it then drives you to like compensate through whatever behavior then I think that's when you're ending up in this like binge cycle of like binge restrict binge restrict or whatever your compensatory behavior but like yeah that's when you end up in that kind of cycle too hot <laughs> So yeah, those are the things that I do to try to like respond to my body's physical and mental hunger, to introduce these foods in gradually and gradually, gradually, <laughs> and to allow myself to have them. But I think it is so important that if you eat more than you'd planned, more than your meal plan, I don't know, some like you feel like you're out of control with your eating, like it's so normal, like your body and mind are starved. Of course, they're going to drive you to go and eat these foods. And your body's not going to crave all of these foods forever. Like it craves it because it's been denied it. Like if you tell your brain not to think of something, that's like that don't think of a pink elephant. All you can think about is a pink elephant. And this totally goes beyond that. Like we're telling our minds we're not allowed this food. Our body's been denied it. So like every power is in play inside us to drive us to go and eat those foods. So it is totally normal that we do have these cravings, but like they won't last forever, but we do need to listen to them. As long as we're denying our body and our mind a food, it's gonna crave it. And yeah, once you're like, body knows the food's coming in regularly, it's healthier, your mind knows the taste of the food. Both of them aren't worried that it's, they're gonna be sent back into restriction. Like when they just trust that this food's coming in regularly, they won't need to eat it all when it's all in front of you kind of thing. Okay, I hope that doesn't upset people. I know it can be like a difficult topic. And like I said, this is just like what I've been advised and how I've kind of gone about it to try and not start introducing these foods into my diet and then freak myself out, run back to restriction, try them again, run back to restriction. Like I've tried to just introduce them and then keep going basically, like introduce them, allow them, even though I crave them for every single meal and snack, like just allow that and keep going with it and then introduce new things and just, wait for my body and mind to adjust to it and then be like oh we know what frappuccinos are like i know i can get one whenever i want one like yeah i don't need to crave it or have 15 in a row <laughs> right i'm gonna have to go i am literally so hot so i'm actually going out again this weekend brendan's taking us to the monty python musical which we love and then i've got a girls day as well with some of my friends so I had to record in the middle of the week again but normally i will aim to like record and post a video at the weekend but lots of love to everyone and keep being awesome and i'll record again next weekend <laughs>